Hi, so regular viewers of the channel will know courtesy of video 1272, our neighbours came by and gave us, quite literally, a thousand used phone batteries, which is just awesome because there's a load of things you can do with used phone batteries. Now, I recognise we're lucky in having a neighbour like that, and most people don't have that number of phone batteries, but they do have one, two, half a dozen kicking around. Now, in 1272, we went into how to recognise a good battery and how to get it into a state that you could use it for other projects, because there are quite literally 101 things you could do with a used phone battery. And then you see people making power banks out of them, and there's quite a few videos on YouTube on how to turn them into an extra power bank to carry around with you to charge your phone. But that's not the end of the story. Once you get these things out as their bare battery, you can make a very simple modification and you can actually run things like fairy lights. I mean, it's coming up to Christmas. How irritating are they? A pocket radio, a torch, and these things, which are a nightmare for batteries, a um, remote control, because these are forever going out and you're always looking for spare batteries over your house to do these. All of these things are really simple to modify, including lots and lots of portable devices that you would normally be using batteries for. You can actually adapt these really simply to make them rechargeable. It can be recharged from your phone or from a, a, a plug-in wall supply. And we're going to go through how to actually do that. Okay, to do this, obviously, what you need are some old foam batteries. Whatever it is that you're going to modify, that there, and then one of these. Now, with the foam batteries, what we do is take off the original board and expose the tabs to the battery, just like in video 1272. So we've got our bare battery here with no control on it at all. We need to put that control back on. To do that, you'd use one of these. This is a charge board. Now, these are 83 pence each, so it's really, really cheap. And they're absolutely quite brilliant. It's got a little LED to tell you it's charging, another one to tell you it's charged. And that's a little plug-in that you plug in to a micro USB that can go into your computer or could go into a wall socket. Equally, if you look right there, next to there you've got a plus and a minus, so you can actually just solder wires onto there and charge that from a power supply or any other method that you would choose, as long as the input is 5 volts. Then on this side we've got the connections we need. We've got battery plus there, battery minus there, and clearly that's where your battery goes. Then we've got out plus and out minus. So we solder in wires there and there and go to the battery, wires there and there and go straight to whatever appliance it is that you're going to modify. That's all you really have to do. Now you need to pay attention to what power these can draw, because this can have up to an amp at most. And here we've got a couple of flat Samsung batteries at 2.6 amp hours. These usually charge around about 400 milliamps, so two of those on one of those is just going to be fine. You could probably push it to three, but if you're going to do a massive stack of them, like 10 in one go, you'll need to get a stronger version of that, something that can handle more than an amp. You're going to be looking at something that can handle four or five amps. But for a couple of little batteries like that, one of those is just going to be fine, and there's a lot of power left in them. Now these actually work at 3.85 volts, that's the nominal voltage. When we look at that, we've got two double A's in there at 1.5 volts each, so 3 volts. So we need 3 volts for this, and we've got 3.85 volts going out from this into this, and it's a bit much. But to be honest, most of the time it really doesn't matter. If you're doing something like a torch, that extra little power is completely unimportant. If you're doing something with some more control and sensitivity of the electronics, very often what you find is a little board inside that takes care of that. Because these normal batteries, rather than being straightforward 1.5 volts, are in fact all over the place. And the electronics make sure that the circuit gets what it needs, and it can do that in a massive range of voltages, down from about 2, 2.5 volts, up to about 5 volts. So the voltage on this, and the mismatch of voltage on this, isn't going to matter a jot, as long as you're roughly in the range of where you need to be. So we've got 3.85 here, and 3 in here, fine. Now, if we connect these up, so the same tab goes to the same tab, so that one to that one, that one to that one, and what happens is the amps add up but the voltage remains the same. Now if we connect them differently, like that, so that one would be our out, that one gets connected to that one, and that one is the other out, which would add. So if we connected them like that, we'd have an 8 volt supply, but with 2.6 amps on it. 
If we connect them like that, we have a 4 volt supply, but with 5.2 amps Once on more it. power beyond what this little board can cope with, you need another board, one that can cope with the power. Anyway, let's solder that up. First thing, run a little bit of solder on the tab. Just makes it easier to get the wire on if there's a lump of solder already on there. It's a bit of sponge tape. Now I've got a couple of wires, one black, one red, with crocodile clips on them because I'm going to use this for a whole variety of things. Obviously, if you're going to dedicate it, you just use a straightforward wire. So we clip that in half, strip it back, and the same with the negative. We can attach them to the out here and the out there, negative, positive. Now we've done that and trimmed down the battery wires, we can solder it in battery positive, battery negative. And that's it, ready to go. Now I've put a bit of this sponge tape on the back of the circuit board and stuck it onto the batteries. You can put this in a project box, make a permanent link to it wherever you want to do with it really, but I'm just doing this as a demonstration of how it would be in terms of the wiring and use. You charge it clearly with the micro USB plugged into there, and then to use it, you clip your positive and your negative and turn These it on. These boards actually, for what they are and the price they are, are kind of awesome. They've got charge protection, discharge protection, and you use just a normal micro micro USB, plug it into your um, wall socket or plug it into your computer and you've got a little LED light that's red to tell you it's charging and that'll go green when it's charged. So quite a nice little circuit for its price really. So once you've given that a charge, you can start to use it. Now, if you're using it on a battery appliance, like these fairy lights, for instance, it has a little battery box. And this takes two double A's, and they're in series, so it's actually a three-volt device. But all you do with it is identify which one's the positive, clip the wire to it. Identify the negative, clip the wire to it. Ta-da! There we go. There's our fairy lights running off our repurposed phone battery. Now these are supposed to run on 3 volts, and of course we've got 3.85 volts here, but it doesn't really matter. These things are actually very forgiving of those few points of voltage, and so running that doesn't need much more than the on-off switch. They burn a bit brighter if there's um, a higher voltage, and they burn a bit dimmer when the voltage goes lower, but something that's a bit more sensitive, like this radio for instance, if I take the radio apart, there is my battery holder right there, and again, it's in series, so it's meant to run on three volts, but normally when these have protection circuits all over them. The same as your phone. Your phone's being fed with um, 3.85 volts, but the phone logic needs anywhere between 3.3 volts and 5 volts. So there's an awful lot of regulation to make sure that the voltage on the circuit is uh, controlled. Whereas the input voltage from a battery, well, like I say, that's all over the place. So an awful lot of voltage spread can be put on the battery. So one phone battery is normally going to run just about anything that runs off two double A's. And again, you just identify the positive, which is right there, and identify the negative, which is right there. And we can turn this radio on and play it. <laughs> Not awesome. Now in video 1272 and 1273, I did tell you how to check the batteries and make sure that they were roughly in the same capacity. Because what you'll notice when you look at a big battery bank like this, and this is a kilowatt hour battery bank, each individual cell is not controlled. They're put into groups and there's control over the group. So putting two together like that with one little controller on it, pfft, no worries. When they do this, what they do is they, they check the capacity is round about the same. It doesn't have to be identical, just round about the same. And yes, yeah, sure, if they're not identical, it will reduce the life a little bit. But to be honest, you're using secondhand batteries and any life you get out of them is just plain awesome. So you need to do, uh, do the checks and for that, watch video 1272 and 1273. Make sure they're roughly in the same capacity, and when in the same capacity, sticking two together like that is no hassle at all. And you can see that in a standard battery pack, this is a commercial pack from a scooter, that's actually what's done anyway. So obviously I made it like this with crocodile clips on it, because I want to demonstrate a couple of things with it. But if you want to dedicate it, all you clearly do is 
solder that red wire to that bit, solder the black wire to that bit, drop it in the case and make a hole so you can charge it and you've changed this device from something that used to use disposable batteries into something that is rechargeable via USB. Now that could be done with really seriously 101 things, torches, clocks, radios, lights, these things. Remote controls are obviously a nightmare because when those batteries go you'll spend an hour or two looking for some extra triple A's and eventually go down the store and buy some. That's goodbye to that because you can just recharge the thing. Now if you want to make a pretty project out of a specific thing you're going to have to fit it in the box and do exactly what I said. But clearly this is a win-win on so many levels. Like I say you're no longer dis uh, buying disposables and throwing them away. You're no longer throwing away a foam battery which is perfectly usable and it really is that simple to convert a foam battery into something to make that thing rechargeable. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it's given you some ideas for projects that you're going to do where you can take a battery-driven device and make it USB rechargeable. And quite seriously, there's 101 things you could do with that. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please remember to like and subscribe.